Hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to our Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise tonight. Father, we give you glory and honor tonight, oh God. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for coming. We thank you, God, for the work that you did. We thank you, oh God, that we have a hope, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of salvation tonight. Father God, tonight we lift up this precious service, this last service for 2020 before you, oh God. We present it before you, oh God. Father God, we ask, oh God, that your spirit will lead and guide and direct, oh God. Father, the worshipers, oh God, as they, as they lift your holy name, oh God. That, oh God, the praises will ascend before you tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to my Lord. God, we pray for your servant. Oh God, as your servant come to deliver your word, oh God. We thank you for your anointing, oh God, upon his life tonight, oh God. We thank you that your word will go forth, oh God, in the name of Jesus tonight, oh God. It will accomplish your purpose tonight, oh God. Father, your eyes are upon every one of us here tonight. Even, oh God, upon those that are viewing, oh God. Father, you see the hearts of the people, God. And I pray, God, that every Person, oh God, looking on will be blessed, will be encouraged. Oh God, will receive from you tonight, oh God. I pray for salvation, the spirit of salvation, oh God, will be released, oh God. That, oh God, men and women, boys and girls, those that are discouraged, disturbed, Lord, will find peace in your word, oh God. Will find peace, oh God, and will come to you, oh God, through your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, draw. Holy Spirit, draw tonight, oh God. Oh, oh God, from the east, the west, the north, the south tonight, oh God. Father, I ask your blessing upon every aspect of this service, oh God. As we bring it before you tonight, God, we thank you for what you are going to do tonight, oh God. We thank you that Jesus is lifted up and glorified. Our King, our King is lifted up and glorified forever and ever. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify your name. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Take over, God. Take control. Let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. You know, God has kept us. He has protected us. And I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You know, prior to coming to service, I got dressed very early. And prior to coming to service, I heard some noise and I thought it was firecrackers or fireworks going to behold it was five gunshot right in my district you know and I tell God God is good God is good Amen. God is a good God he is a good God hallelujah God is a good God, and he is a great God. My God is a good God, and he is a great God. So we trample and dismantle every wicked scheme of the enemy. Oh 
I believe. 
your covenant keeping God, Lord. And we bless your name. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have brought us through, Lord. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. You alone deserve the glory, all the honor, and all the praise be unto you, Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, our soon coming King. Hallelujah. Our Savior, our healer, our deliverer, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are always with us. You never leave us. You never thank forsake you, us. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us yes, through God. all the yes, challenges Lord. of this year, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, God, yes, you yes, never yes, let go yes, of us, dear Lord. Lord. You, you held us close to you. you oh, Lord, Lord you are ever Jesus. with us, Lord. Hallelujah. We continue thank to put our hope and our trust yes, and our yes, faith yes, in you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day, I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy.
you can lift your hands and you can say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for helping me through 2020. Thank you that I can come on this old year's night to this watch night service to give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. God bless you. You may be seated in his presence. We look forward to ushering the brand new year in less than one hour's time. In less than one hour's time, we shall be in the brand new year, 2021. We also look forward to this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday will be our first worship service in the brand new year, 2021. Our service commences at 9 a.m. sharp on Sunday morning. Incidentally, it is also our communion service, the first Sunday in the brand new year, 2021. If you do not have a home church, we take this opportunity to invite you to our Sunday morning service, 9 a.m. this Sunday morning. Also on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., we will be having our first deliverance service for the year 2021. It is a healing, miracle, and deliverance service. All are invited. Folks come from throughout Princess Tongue. Folks come from outside of Princess Tongue. If you know anybody who is in need, who is in a special need for a miracle, in special need for deliverance, you can invite them to this service. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we want to take a look back before we look forward. Before we look forward to 2021, we want to take a look at 2020, a year in review. Good night and welcome to the Princess Town Open Bible Year in Review. 2020 has been quite different. A year of the new normal and virtual everything. As we closed off 2019, who would have known what we would have encountered a year later? Nonetheless, here we are gathered to give God thanks that he has kept us, provided for us, and blessed us through it all. This year started like any other, with plans for the building project, our regular church activities, and events alike. Grand plans were in progress to celebrate our anniversary service. This year marks 64 years as a church, says the drill hall days. However, March 27, 2020 marks 60 years of service from this, our A.S. Avenue location. However, due to the COVID-19 virus, these plans have been put on hold. Our kindergarten, however, was blessed to host the annual sports day before the various regulations were enforced. Teaching also transitioned to a virtual mood. Despite being a virtual semester, the students were gifted with their annual Christmas treats. Due to the lockdown measures, church looked a little different for us this year. At the beginning of this new normal, we were greeted with brief exhortations from Reverend Amzad Muhammad until we were able to commence our live streams and even partake of Holy Communion together at home. Starting with only five persons being allowed in the building, we began to broadcast our 10 a.m. worship services to you. Thankfully, within a month, we were all able to gather together to worship in person at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. On August 2nd, we welcomed our present pastors, Reverend Drs. Charles and Charmaine Alexis, who are serving on an interim basis. The weekly Mountain Movers service saw growth in attendance with visitors from different areas of the country. Amen. 
During this period, we began our in-depth study into the book of Genesis, followed by the Christmas story during our weekly Tuesday evening online Bible study. We connected via Zoom for our Sunday afternoon hour of power as we maneuvered through the new normal. As the regulations were lifted, we assembled at 44 Tramline Street for an hour of prayer, praise, and powerful teachings from our pastors. As you would have seen, we have made significant progress on our church building. We started this year with only our basement level. Although we encountered setbacks from the COVID-19 safety regulations, the erection of the structural framing commenced, which was followed by the installation of Roman columns, decking pans, or the stairways. By the ending of November, all three floors were cast and block work began and is ongoing. As the year came to a close, we embraced the online platforms available to us as we held our first virtual Christmas concert. We thank you for joining in and supporting us to make that event a success. We also thank you for your gifts and donations towards our hamper distribution project in providing food for many families. In keeping with the reason for the season, Christmas morning 2020 took the form of a journey to Bethlehem with appearances by King Herod, the wise men, the heavenly host, and of course, Bethlehem News. As we end this year and enter into another, we want to thank each and every one of you for your support throughout the year, for your cheerful giving, prayer, and participation, for joining us online and in person. To all departmental leaders and committees, we also thank you for your dedication and support in making this year a success. And to you, our online family, those who would have joined us throughout this year, commented, liked, shared, subscribed, and utilize the chat, we thank you and value your virtual presence with us. On behalf of the leadership of the Prentistown Open Bible Church, we take this opportunity to wish you a happy new year, a year filled with God's blessings and favor. Happy, happy new, new year. year. Yes, you can put your hands together. To God be the glory. Can somebody shout glory? Thank God. I ask you to stand all over this auditorium and help me to welcome none other than your senior interim pastor, my senior interim pastor, none other than Reverend Dr. Charles Alexis. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for him this evening. Last service in the year 2020. God is good. You might be in for a surprise, but pastor, all to you. Amen. Praise Lord. You may be seated. Amen. I, I greet you in a wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ, your own special greetings from our online audience. Are you happy to be in God's house tonight? Yes. Amen. Tonight we have a number of surprises. The first surprise is that our speaker will be none other than my Bible school teacher. Amen. <laughs> this is Reverend Dr. Charmaine Alexis. Amen. Uh, of the, uh, she, she taught me in Bible school, and you know, when, I, when she was young and she was radical, but I, coming up in the Laventil community, I felt I was radical too, so we, I say we're going to have a contest because she, was a, she's, she has always been a disciplinarian. When I realized I couldn't overthrow her, the Lord said, well, join her and get married to her. See, amen. So, bless God. So, we are here together tonight as a team, and we are happy to see all of you as we come to celebrate and to move into the new year 2021. And, and truly, this is a champion church. Tell someone close to you that this is a champion church with a champion people. Amen. And I'm sure I'm, uh, if I had a million dollars, I would have given it to someone who could have said to me what you observed about the worship team. What do you observe about the worship team? Let me give you the answer first because I do have a million dollars. The answer is, you know, this is a generational church. If you look at that platform, you see three generations. So much amen. Amen? You see the two ladies here? They are around my age. Somebody say amen. And then Roseanne is another generation. Somebody say amen. And then uh, somebody say amen. Three generations. Very rare you see that in a church. Three generations. So tell me, but thank God you, you, you are part of a generational church. Also this evening, uh, and you look very beautiful. Somebody say amen. And you look special. This evening I have some special friends who came from really far. And we have, uh, some of you may know some of these folks. Um, uh, one of these uh, individuals is someone who you'll know as a, a, a statesman. And, uh, you know, his pastor asked me yesterday if I could uh, give him the direction for this church because he, he would like to visit. You know, this is a gentleman when Christmas comes, as I heard the announcement, he has a something for the children in his community, 700 to 800 children. And he, he, I mean, he celebrates Christmas in a big way. Most of us may know him. Some of you may not know him. But he has, he's, from one, he's from a very large family. And he has a sister. She's a powerhouse, as like Sister Alexis, a powerful apostolic lady from England. And that gentleman, you know, I would like him to stand first, as I call his name. He's none other than Mr. William Monroe. Stand, because most of you may not know, you would have heard the name William Monroe, amen, as someone in the, in the culture of this nation, but he's a powerful, born again, spiritual man of God, and I cannot let him come so far, he came with some friends, could you all stand up, and let's acknowledge them, praise the Lord, and we'd like him to come, and uh, just bring some greetings, because he has, he's a man full of the Holy Ghost, and has a lot to offer. So come on, my brother Monroe, and just be up on mic. We just let him share a few words. Praise the Lord. And he has a powerful ministry with men as well. So when I saw um, Bishop Steve Sankar come, I said, yes, amen. A good man to connect him to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, hello. Pleasant good night to each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. It's a joy being here. Praise the Lord. With all these lovely, wonderful people before me, serving the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Praise let us Lord. give him a say a happy thanks to Amen. Jehovah God for Amen. a Lord. wonderful year. Thank you for us being in the land of the living. We thank God for life and the whole, health and strength. And he have done so much for us, but we give him so little in return. But he's a loving and giving God. And I pray that he will continue to cover us with the blood throughout the year. Give us success, success, health, and strength. And I thank you, Father Lord, for guiding me to be here tonight. Every Sunday, a few Sundays, I start on the line looking at Pastor Alexis. And it was so interesting with the service online. I say I have to be present here tonight with my friends. I invite them, and they just here. They're happy to be here. So I just want to say, may the good Lord cover you all with the blood of Jesus, Amen. and health and strength be with you all, success and all the good things that you all wish you all self for the new year. I hope it materialize 
fruitfully for each and every one of you and myself. Thank Brother, you. Sister Best, we understand our acknowledgement. Outstanding musical family. Praise the Lord. God bless you. They came from real far as well. He has his own music school. Praise the Lord. And it's, when, I, when I saw my brother, outstanding uh, musical gift, outstanding guitarist. Amen. And uh, they are also from, you know, up north on my side. So God bless them. And we welcome all of you tonight to go so Somebody say amen. 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 And uh, what I should say to you is that uh, uh, Brother William Monroe is part of the San Juan Reconciliation uh, Open Bible Standard Church. He is the, one of the foundation members of that church. Amen? And he uh, is a man that loves the Lord, and I trust that God will uh, uh, give him a special anointing to go to Bible school. So much amen. And to, you know, to, to, to be a powerful preacher of God's word, because he has some ministers in his family who are powerful preachers, and I know God has something great in store for him. Somebody say amen. Amen. So God bless you tonight, and uh, without any further delay, it, is, it gives me a great joy to present to you our minister tonight, none other than Reverend Dr. Charmaine Margaret Alexis. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. A pleasant good evening to each and every one of you. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We have just 45 minutes, and I have a one-hour message. So you know what that means. Let's bow our hearts and pray and get straight down to God's word this evening. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege that we have to be in your house. We thank you for the word of God that is quick and sharp. It is alive today. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And tonight, in Jesus' name, we pray that the word of God will resonate in our hearts and that the spirit of God will speak to us this evening in no other name but in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. This evening, I want you to turn your Bibles uh, to the gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 22. Reading from verse 1 to 14. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, 
how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. May God have his blessing to the reading and to the understanding of his word this evening. Now, as we look at this evening's story, we would realize that it is Jesus that is speaking. And he is sharing a parable. Now, what is a parable? A parable, very simply put, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And many times Jesus will speak in parables so that he could use the circumstances around him to be able to reach to the hearts of those that he was ministering to. There were times also that he wanted to keep some things from them. And so he would not speak plainly to them and he would speak in parables. As we look at Matthew's gospel here, we will see that he gave to them this parable. And this parable had to do with a king. It had to do with a marriage, the marriage of his son. So this evening we are going to be talking a bit about a royal wedding. A royal wedding. Now this king arranged the marriage for his son. And we would know in old times, it wasn't like in our modern times, the parents will do the arranging and the choosing of the partners. And so this case was no different. But as Jesus paints this graphic picture, what we observe is that what he was saying to them is when the king came, or actually when he sent his servants, he sent them to you know, a group of people that did not receive the offer that he was offering. And the king waited a little bit and then he sent servants again to them the second time. And they did not accept the invitation. As a matter of fact, what the Bible tells us, there are different kinds of people in that group that Jesus is speaking about that the invitation had gone to. The first bad said, well, listen, I have a farm to see about, you know. I have my estate. I have my garden to plant. I have my family to see about. So I really ain't have no time to go to the wedding. The second group said, well, you know, we are business people and we are really busy about our merchandise and we have to get our business going and running. So uh, um, we, we don't have no time. And so the Bible gives us this picture here of this group of people that really was not interested in coming to the marriage, to the marriage of the king's son. So the scripture goes on to tell us that the king got angry and he got angry because the third group, they decided, listen, I tired of you just telling me, come to wedding, come to wedding. Hear what? And what they did, they killed the servants that had been sent. The Bible tells us they slew them. And if we are to look in history, we would realize there is no question that Jesus is speaking about the Jewish people. The Jewish people, God had chosen them as a special people. They were the people to declare the glory of God, to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. But they refused to do so. God tried with them in the Old Testament. He tried with them in the New Testament. And by the time we came to the New Testament, we know that they murdered Jesus. And at the end of the day, they slaughtered the apostles as well. So what did God do? God became angry. 
story according to the story that Jesus is telling here. Now remember, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And so Jesus is painting the picture here that, listen, the Jews did not want what the king was offering. And as a result, when the king got angry, what did he do? According to history, we are told just about 40 years after Jesus' resurrection, God allowed the Roman army under Titus to overrun Jerusalem and to burn Jerusalem. And this is what Jesus is saying. The king got so angry that he just burned the city. The scripture goes on to say to us, there was a third group. So he gives them a third command. And he says, hear what? These people that I had specially chosen, they disregarded, disrespected me. So hear what I want you to do. I want you to go out to the highways and to the byways. And whoever you find out there, I want you to bring them to my son's marriage, to the marriage dinner. And so they went out there, we understand. And they went to the highways. And of course, the highways and the byways are where we call those meeting places where everybody you will find there of all kinds. And they went out there and the people who got that invitation, it seems according to this parable that they were quite happy to go to the wedding. And what that says to us is that while the Jews refused what God was offering to them, the Gentiles lapped it up. Hallelujah! The Gentiles decided that we are indeed going to respond to the king. Now, if we were to look at that story, that story is loaded. I mean, it's loaded with heavenly truths. And in no way in 45 or even 60 minutes could I delve into the depths of that story. So what I'm going to do for this old year's evening, we are just going to focus on one element of the story and that element is the garment that's all we're going to talk about that's all we have time for this evening so we are going to focus on the garment it is my duty tonight to evoke as I would say serious thinking on our part as we step out of 2020 and as we move right in to 2021 I want to let us know Oh, this evening that eternity is at hand. I want us to know that the marriage supper of the Lamb is around the corner. I want us to know that the hour is late. The night is far spent. The day is at hand and we can't afford to sleep tonight. And so my question which brings us to the theme of this evening's message, is are you wearing your garment? Are you wearing your garment? I'm just going to share four simple points as it relates to the garment. Our focus is just on the garment. First of all, I want to say to us that the garment in this story is available. It's available. And not only is it available, but it is available to all. Hear what the Bible says. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite them 
to the wedding. And to those of us in the church this evening, I invite you to the wedding. To those of you listening to us online, there is an available garment for each and every one of us. Verse 10 says, so those servants went out into the highways and they gathered together all whom they found both bad and good. And so it seems to me that when the scripture tells us that they gathered both bad and good, it meant that the king could not care to hoots as we will say who they were. Whether they were rich or they were poor. Whether they were black or they were white. Whether they were educated or uneducated. Whether they were just street dwellers or they were just dumpsters. The scripture tells us good and bad. So the king did not really care what they were coming in to the marriage with as far as who they were. He simply wanted a wedding celebration. And I want to say to us, that is what the king still simply wants. He is coming again for a people. He wants to fill his heaven. What do we see here? We see a true representation of what the Lord has done in his plan of salvation. The Bible tells us that he prepared a way for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, both good and bad. His plan this evening is available to all who would come. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. John 7, 37, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man of thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And in verse 38, he said, He that believeth in me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart. Revelation 22 17 and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that hear say come and let him that is a thirst let him come and whosoever will let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Thank you, darling. All right, so we're moving on. So I'm here to say to you that Jesus loves you. And he has a salvation that he's offering to every one of us this evening. Not only is the garment available to all, but the garment is available by invitation only. To whom did the invitation first go? It went to the Jews. They made their excuses. But when he sent it to the other group, it went to, to all. The only way they could have gotten into that marriage ceremony was by invitation. 
invitation, invitation. Let us remember concerning salvation. You know, John's gospel chapter 6 says in verse 44, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Therefore he say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. I want to to let us know this evening because, you know, some of us, we have a tendency to fix our own time and organize our own selves and determine when we will and when we're ready and when we're old enough and when we've done what we're supposed to do and when the Spirit of God is drawing us, we do not take heed. And then, lo and behold, there comes a time when that voice becomes silent. You can only come to God when he draws you by his spirit. And so I implore you tonight, once the spirit of God is speaking to your heart, respond to that voice. Not only is that garment available, but that garment is also active acceptable. In other words, we must accept that garment in order to be able to make it. Now I need to mention here, it was common in Bible times that when there was a royal wedding, the weddings of kings as we will say, and an invitation will go out to the guests that the king had the responsibility to provide the garment for his guests. So it wasn't a case like, you know, when they invite us to a wedding, we had to check and see how much money we have and if we could make it. Because we know to go to the wedding, you have to look a certain way. And so if you know you ain't had the money, you get all kind of excuse and you don't show up. But if you really want to go to the wedding, you save your little pennies, put it together, and you spend your money, and you go to wedding looking good. In this story, you ain't had to do that. The garment is being provided for you. Are you getting the message this evening? The garment is provided for you. However... You must accept the garment. I want to read Ephesians 2 and verse 8. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Our salvation this evening is not a salvation that we could buy. It's not a salvation that we have money for or we don't have money for. Our salvation has been provided for us by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Our salvation has been purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb as a Lamb without blemish and without spot. Romans 3, 24, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come, buy, eat. Romans 3, 24 says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So this salvation that's being offered to us we cannot pay for it. When the invitation went out there, the king knew that he had what it took to provide for those that he was inviting to the marriage. Not only that, but this salvation cannot be attained by works. It is given when a sinner places his or her faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto salvation, but with the mouth confession is made. That salvation is freely, freely, freely given. We don't have to work for it. Those people on the highways and the byways didn't have to go work for it. They got a free invitation. All they had to do was show up. The garment this evening is identifiable. And what I mean by that is that that garment, the minute the king stepped into that marriage hall, we ought to call it, or that dinner hall, or that banquet hall, the minute he stepped in, he knew who was wearing the right garment because he immediately identified the person who was not wearing the right garment. Now, I want to take a minute and just look at the word garment a little bit in this context and you know sometimes as we teach we will use the Greek language and you'll, you'll wonder why do we always go back to the Greek but I'll explain something to you in the English language we would use one word and that one word would mean all kind of thing so for example I would say I just eat a good food and when I say a good food, your understanding of what I just told you is that I really enjoy that food, boy. That food tastes good. You understand? It tastes right. It wasn't sour. It was, you know, it tastes good. And I will say good food. And then I would look at a man that I'm dealing with. And based on how he operates with me, I will say he is a good man. Now, it's not like he's sour like the food, but you understand when I say he's a good man, I mean based on what he does, he is a good man. So in the English language, we will have one word. And that one word could mean ten different things. But when we use it in our context, we understand it, don't we? Right? Because the English language is a little bit limited. So you may have one word and you use it in five or six different ways. In the Greek language, is a little bit different. What happens in the Greek language is that for everything that is a little bit different, there is a different word. And this is what makes, I think this is why God shows that language. Because there is a depth to that language that unfolds truths in a different kind of way. So for example... Let us just look at this word, garment. Now, when we hear garment, what we think of? Clothes, could be our pants, could be our shirt, could be our dress, could be our robe, could be our shawl, could be our socks and all. Garment, one word. But in the Greek language, it's not like that. In the New Testament, the word garment, there are four five words for it. So for example, hemation means a garment that is getting old. So in the Greek language, you will not use the same word for a garment that's getting old like another garment. So if the garment is getting old, they will use hemation. If the garment is spotted by the flesh according to Jude 123, the word garment there yeah, is ketone. The third word is tole. Tole now has to do with that special garment that Jesus had on after the resurrection. And you don't see that tole anywhere else. Then you come now to what we call pode race. Pode race is whenever you have a garment that is just long. That's a pode race. 
So, as I look at this story, I realize Jesus is talking about a garment. But when I went, I see all kind of words for garment. But then I saw this word, and here is what it means. It means it was a long outer garment. So it was like the dress you would have on. It would be the outer garment or the coat that you may have on over the dress. Now there's a reason for it. So by the Spirit of God, allowing the scriptures to be written with the word enduma, enduma, which is the outer robe, we will observe something different as against all the other robes. First of all about this garment, because it was an outer garment, it had the potential to change the appearance of the people. So if you had on a tattered garment, or a worn garment, or a dirty looking garment, or probably just a little piece of garment to cover you, the garment that the king was providing was an outer garment that would provide you with a change in your appearance. So whereas you would be looking all tattered, now with this garment thrown over you, you are looking a bit different. Not only that, the garment also had the potential to cover your appearance. So not just to change how you look, but to cover you. I hope you all are, are, are unraveling what I'm saying to you this evening. It had the power to cover the appearance. And I want to say, based on what this garment had the power to do, the word of God says, it tells us that our righteousness is like filthy rags. But what did Jesus do when he brought us in and when he saved us? He gave to us a robe of righteousness. But that robe of righteousness, he did not take off the first one, you know. He covered us with it. He changed our appearance with it. So I want to say something long enough to the believer before I get a little bit deeper here. That the garment, which is the outer garment that Jesus puts on us. It does not totally do away with some of the all ways and the all habits and the all things that you carried for years. But that garment of righteousness, if you keep it on long enough, it's going to begin to totally set you free. And that is why when Jesus was resurrected, he wore what he wore, the ponderous. There is coming a day when we will no longer have to get the enduma just to cover us on this earth. But we are going to get a complete, a perfect, 100% makeover. Are you with me this evening? And so Jesus' righteousness covers us. But hear what? Some of us serving God for many years and we're still battling with a lot of things. We're still struggling with a lot of things. We're still seeing some things there that somehow like it not moving. And this is why we got to go deep in God. Because as we go deep in God, we'll get more covered. And so we are not perfect. He covers us. The story goes on to tell us on this fourth point about the absence of the wedding garment. And that's where I want to zero in this evening. After all the guests had arrived, the king observed that there was someone who was not Wearing a wedding garment. A 
couple of things come to mind as we listen to this parable. And one is, for him to be there in the first place is because he heard. Are you with me? He heard the invitation. He got the invitation like everybody else. He was in the banqueting hall like everybody else. What was his problem? He did not have on the garment that was provided. And I want to stop long enough to say to Christians, now this message is a two-edged sword, really. It's to the lost. If you're lost this evening, you can be saved. You can be found because the invitation goes out to you. But to the Christian, the Lord has sent me with this word to warn us. To warn us. And I'll tell you why. Because many of us, we have heard the invitation. We have come into the kingdom. We are here among the saints. But you know what was that guy's problem? He did not want to line up with what the king had provided. You see, many times we want to live this Christian life according to our standards. According to our ways. So even though the word of God and are coming home here now strong on you tonight. Because God loves you, he loves me, he loves this church, and he's coming for a church without spot and without wrinkle. And so what was going on with that guy is what God had provided for him. He chose he was going to do his own thing. You see, when you read in the Bible that fornication is a sin, It might be a sin for somebody else, but I could be a Christian and fornicate. I could be a Christian and live shack up living. I could be a Christian and could be a liar. I could be a Christian and have unforgiveness in my heart day after day after day after year after year after year. I can be a Christian and have envy and hate and malice and greed. I can be a Christian and all, all of that. I can be a Christian and I can be proud and feel I'm better than everybody else. Yes, I could be a Christian according to my own standard. But may I submit to the church of Jesus Christ here tonight. It's God's standard or nothing. It's God's standard or nothing. I want to bring out a couple of things here with this garment that, that, that this guy really, <laughs> you know, let me just see if I have it here. No, I have it in my heart. It's not here. So let me take it out of my heart. That garment spoke, I'm just going to pull a few out. It spoke about Unity. When the king came into that banqueting hall, there was a unison. Everybody was wearing the white garment. But this guy, he liked division. So he didn't have to be like everybody else. There was peace in the place, but he, he had to stir up a storm. And what am I saying this evening? I'm saying that many times when God establishes his word, his way, his direction, we want to do things our way. And the word of God is showing us through this parable that Jesus is not going to settle for that. So it's a good night 
to examine our hearts. It's a good night. Oh my word, is it midnight? Is it? Three minutes to midnight. Three minutes, okay, three minutes. First of all, when the king came in, there was what we call confrontation. There comes a point where God is going to confront us. And I pray that it is tonight and not after. I pray it is tonight we deal with the confrontation. Secondly, and I'm going to just summarize here now. Not just the confrontation, but there was commotion in the place. Because all of a sudden, when the king's wrath was kindled, everybody wake up and realize, oh my Lord, what did this man do? And finally, there was consummation. The Bible tells us that the king told the servants, take him hand and foot. And I want to close by saying this final thing. What did he call him? wasn't his enemy. He said, friend. What does that say to me? That says to me that he was really numbered. He was supposed to be there, but he wanted his own way to do his own thing. The only other place you get that word friend, that original Greek word, heterios is the word. The only other place you got that is when Jesus was speaking to, what's the guy? Um, Judas, Judas. When Jesus was speaking to Judas, and he said, friend, that's the same word, betrays me with a kiss. He was a part of the team. Brothers and sisters this evening, let us not pretend to be part of the team, but let's be real. Let's be true. Let's bow our hearts in this midnight hour. This is the time. This is the moment. You may be here tonight. And if you're not a Christian, the door is wide open for you to come in. The king is saying, come in to the marriage. Are you here and you're not saved? And you want Jesus, just lift your hand and we will pray for you tonight. Anybody here? And if you're online, wherever you are, lift Lift your hand as an expression of faith that I want this Jesus. And to the child of God, it's not business as usual in 2021. It's time to drop all those personal agendas off and pick up God's agenda. It's time to get rid of what God say get rid of. It's time to refuse what God says refuse. It's time to accept what God says accept. God is saying it's my way or no way at all. Oh Father in this midnight hour as we move into the new year. Oh Robo Shaka Inana no Rebebe Yosoto Robo Ye Ika in the name of Jesus we bring the church of Jesus Christ before you oh God you're coming soon you're coming for ready people you're coming for prepared people you're coming for a people who will follow you all the way forgive us Lord let your blood wash us of our selfishness of our desires to do it my way. And oh God, we humble ourselves under your lordship. We want to see your face. We want to see your face. Teach us obedience. Teach us submission. Because Lord, all of these are the things that those who got that white garment, they were obedient to the king. They were submissive to the king. They obeyed the king. Hallelujah, Lord. We want to obey you. Oh, let the blood wash. Just take a few quiet moments and you say what you need to say to Jesus.
lift your hands and praise him this 2021. Thank him. We're in the land of the living. We have the opportunity to change. We have the opportunity to follow Jesus all the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So we bless your name this evening, Father. In the name of Jesus. Praise Lord. Thank God for his good tonight. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Let's stand together in his presence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ask Brother Dinoran to come and just close us in a word of prayer and pray a blessing upon God's people. Praise the Lord. It's been a joy having you here with us. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank Reverend Alexis to that powerful message of salvation. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if you need someone to probably talk to you, maybe you, have a, you need a special prayer, we are here. You can always come. We can have a word of prayer with you right after we are dismissed. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Father and God, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercies and for your grace and for your favor. Lord, tonight we thank you for your word, dear God. Your word which has given us an opportunity to repent. Your word which has given us an opportunity to be clothed with the right garment. Lord, tonight we thank you for your word. We pray tonight for somebody, God, who might be here tonight, who do not know you as Lord and Savior. We pray, God, that you would draw them by your spirit. We pray, God, for those of us who are here, dear God, and who need to change in this new year, 2021. We pray that you would continue to minister through your word, dear Father. And tonight, Lord, we bring before you the church. We thank you, O oh God, for bringing us out of the year 2020 in the brand new year, 2021, dear Father. Tonight, we take the time to call upon you tonight and to give you praise, thanks, honor, and glory. Tonight, we pray, God, for the church. We pray, O oh God, that in 2021, your people, O oh God, would fail not, dear God. We pray that your people would look not to the left nor to the right, but they would continue to look unto you, dear God, the author and the finisher of their faith, dear Father. We pray, God, that in 2021, your people, O oh God, will have a greater desire to serve you, dear Father, and they will have a greater desire to walk in your ways, dear God. Lord, we pray in 2021, dear God, there will be change and there will be growth and there will be progress, dear Father. We pray, O oh God, for your people in a special way. We pray, God, for those who, oh God, represent homes, dear God, where we have unsaved loved ones, dear Father, that in 2021 you will save, dear Father. Tonight, dear God, we pray, dear God, on this first day of the year 2021, dear God, for our Prime Minister, dear Father, and for the country, dear God, for the leaders, dear God, for the leader of the opposition, dear Father. We pray for them, dear God. We bring before you tonight our president, dear Father. We pray, oh God, for the members of parliament, dear God, tonight. Dear God, that in 2021, dear God, we will have, oh God, better government, dear God, and greater leadership, dear Father, and greater unity, oh God, among those who lead us, dear Father. We pray, oh God, for those who represent the judicial system, dear Father. In the year 2021, dear God, we will see progress and we will see growth. We pray, God, for our police commissioner, dear Father. For another year, God, we pray that you would protect him, dear God. You would give him wisdom, dear God. You would give him direction, oh God, as he would lead this country, dear God, for another year. We pray, God, for the members of the Coast Guard and the members of the regiment, dear Father. We bring them all before you, dear God. We pray, God, that in 2021, your hands will be once more upon Trinidad and Tobago. We pray from the beginning of the year, dear God, to the end of the year, dear God, the eyes of the Lord will continue to be upon this land. Lord, for another year, we count on you, dear God, to protect us, dear God, from the storms and from the hurricanes, dear God, and from the economic downturns, dear God. We trust you, dear Father. Now, Lord, as we must go, dear God, we pray that you would take us to our homes in safety. We pray, God, that you would cover us under the protection of the blood of Jesus Christ. We pray that you would keep us safe, dear Father. We commit all into your hands, dear God, and all God's people say, 
Amen and amen. God bless you. We are dismissed. Happy Lay a mask. New Year. Greet somebody. Happy New Year. As you go, you can give the offerings. The usher is going to receive the offering at the door. They're going to receive your tithes in a brand new year, 2021. God bless you. You are dismissed.